Item of business is members' business debate on motion 12476 in the name of Christina McKelvey on MND Awareness Week 2018. And this debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Uh, I would ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to please press the request to speak buttons now. And I call on Christina McKelvey to open the debate for around seven minutes, please. Uh, thank you very much, President Officer. Can I ha uh, pay a grateful thanks to uh, the colleagues across the Chamber who signed the motion to allow us to have this debate today. President Officer, the 21st of June is the day of global recognition of motor neuron disease. And when I hear any mention of motor neuron disease, my ears instantly perk up because for me it's personal and not professional. You see, when I hear the words motor neuron disease, it recalls for me the pain, the fear, the grief, the loss, and the shock that comes with the diagnosis, not just for the person affected, but for their families too. Motor neuron disease has no boundaries. It isn't determined by your age, your lifestyle, or your wealth. It strikes at any point in your life and has differing degrees of speed and impact. Motor neuron disease is a rapidly progressing neurological terminal illness. Motor, ne motor neuron disease stops signals from the brain reaching the muscles. The muscles start to waste and weaken and eventually stop working. This may cause someone to lose the ability to walk, talk, eat, drink, or even breathe unaided. Some people may also experience these changes which affect their behavior and their ability to think and plan. Not everyone will develop all the symptoms and how it affects individuals can vary significantly. For this reason, that's why the current Motor Neuron Disease Scotland campaign to bust the myths around motor neuron disease is so vitally important and they have a brilliant video that you can share to get the message out about MND and what it means, tackling the stigma and ending the discrimination. No one person is the same, and that's why the Motor Neuron Disease Register is so important. The more data we have, the better we will be at ensuring better short, medium and long-term care. President Officer, when I started raising these issues in this chamber 11 years ago, it was on one of the first speeches I made in the chamber, and it was a debate held by Margaret Mitchell. But it was 11 years ago, and 11 years ago, the average life expectancy was 14 months. That's now 20 months, and I believe that's because of that better care and more joined up support. And you may think it's only six months, but I'll tell you that six months is incredibly precious to the people with motor neuron disease and their families. And when I hear the words motor neuron, motor neuron disease Scotland, then I am filled with another set of emotions. They are pride, determination, and above all, hope. An amazing thing happens when we find out a friend, relative, or colleague has been diagnosed with motor neuron disease. We spring into action. I have seen this happen with so many times over so many years with those involved with motor neuron disease Scotland. People abseil off buildings, zip slide across rivers, climb into forgotten cities, walk great walls and walk over fire to raise money and awareness. These actions give us all hope in the darkest of hours. They tell us that people care. They tell us that people will literally walk on fire to make things better. And that's why when I hear eh, motor neuron disease, I also hear hope. Hope that we'll be find the routes to better care and through the Scottish Government funded specialist to MND nurses or ideas for better support and the hope that the research will eventually bring that cure. I believe the work of the Ewan MacDonald Research Centre with Professor Shandran and his team at Edinburgh University will make that much hope for breakthrough that takes us on to that much needed cure. And that's why the research funding from both Motor Neuron Disease Scotland and the Scottish Government is so vitally important. PhD students in our land working hard to understand and treat motor neuron disease. Working in conjunction with our best universities should surely give us all that hope that I speak of. One of the cruelest aspects of motor neuron disease is the likelihood of some people to lose their voice. Our voice is such a distinct part of our personality and many of us in this place surely like the sound of our own voices, but how would we feel if we couldn't raise them? I've we use our voices to raise the concerns that we all have in this debate today. And we used our voices here to add to the Voice Bank project, a project that just might give you back your voice, your own voice, instead of an electronic voice. How powerful, powerful is that? 
The Motor Neuron Disease Scotland Let Me Speak campaign resulted in the Scottish Government giving the right to communication equipment for our, from our NHS, and this came into force this March. It will give those who need it the necessary equipment like iPads and iGaze technology to enable them to continue to communicate effectively. Another reason for that hope. And if any of you heard the amazing speech last night from broadcaster Dennis Dick using his own electronic voice, you will understand what an amazing um, commitment that is to provide that equipment to people. Now, I know that navigating the benefit system can be a daunting task for anyone, but if you have suddenly lost your job due to your diagnosis or a fam family member has to give up their job to take on a caring role, the last thing you need is impenetrable forms and complicated processes to go through to get what you are entitled to. Mix that with the constant reassessment and appeals, then it all seems too hard to get anywhere and get what you need. When the Social Security Bill went through this Parliament recently, I saw a great opportunity to change that system to one of support, dignity and respect. I supported MND Scotland's campaign, Get Benefits Right, and was delighted to hear Jean Freeman, our Social Security Minister, announce automatic entitlement and lifetime awards for people with MND. You have no idea the impact that will have on people's lives. The difference it will make to families is immeasurable and welcome. And I know only too well from what my family went through to get that support, how important that is. And with the, two, the new two-person MND Scotland advocacy support team, if you've not met them, you should. I'm sure no one will wait very long for the help that they need. In its first two months, 40 families have had support from the advocacy team, bringing much needed hope, again, that word hope, to those families. As I am sure you will all be well aware, I could go on about this topic, but I'm very keen to hear from my colleagues across the chamber and their experience, and I know that you all have different aspects that you wish to go on. But for those who have lost, we have lost, and those facing life with MND, let's face the future with hope in our hearts, because if we can scale mountains and walk on fire, we can find that cure. And I wish Motor Neuron Disease Scotland and all MND and ALS organisations around the world a hope-filled Global Awareness Day. Thank you.